for comprehensive ophthalmologist, you know, uh, Vice Dr. S.P. Singh, Chief Instructor, and along with myself, our co-instructor also present here, just I request to other, uh, Dr. Binod Singh, Dr. Prasta is here, Dr. Prasta, Binod Singh, please come and join, Dr. Jitain, Dr. Shivangi. So as you know, uh, in case in the, uh, as you know very well that the the further cut and advance uh, this recent period the uh, in cataract surgery implantation of the lens in the back is of course one of the uh, this uh, this very good thing uh, to provide better be outcome. But you know there are certain situations in which the, there is uh, this uh, capsule support is not proper. In educate or the general compromises there then you can't put the uh, lens in the back. As uh, certain situations are there, maybe uh, complicated cataract surgery in which uh, the PC may ruptured. As you know, the PC may ruptured in uh, some of the uh, situation may complicated, well reported also. Uh, even with his spread hands, it may, uh, uh, PC may rupture, or certain congenital situation in which junius are very big, congenital conditions, Marfan syndrome, the subluxation is much more, or uh, subluxated lens or trauma. Then there's uh, no option is left, except uh, you have to think for the other option. Other option may be, you know, the, it may be implanted in the anterior chamber, angle supported, or uh, anteriorly, uh, iris square lens, or uh, SFO, square supported lens, fixated lens, or the uh, retro -pipris. So. Without wasting much time, just I would like to just request the uh, first speaker, uh, Dr. Sivangi Singh, who is uh, uh, going to speak on the retro iris car lens, uh, surgical technique, uh, and now that is uh, gaining uh, popularity over the other option. So just I request I start and so that. A very good morning to everyone present here and to my seniors. Uh, I'll be talking about the retropupillary iris claw lens. Uh, so starting with the introduction. Excuse me, it's not moving. Uh, I would like to uh, uh, tell about Shivangi. She's a wonderful uh, senior resident in the department. Now she's assistant professor. And she does some surgeries which many of us would not be doing. She is a complete eye surgeon. She does anterior and posterior, all the surgeries. And she is daughter of my dear friend, Dr. S.P. Singh, and my Bhatiji, Shivangi. Please. Thank you, sir. I am a good surgeon because I got a good guidance from my teachers. <laughs> thank you. So thank you. Uh, so I'll be st talking about retropupillary iris claw lens, starting with the introduction. These lenses have been increasingly chosen by surgeons nowadays because of their simple technique favorable functional outcome, safety, and there is lesser learning curve in this, and they are economical as well. So the various, uh, various options that are available nowadays are the anterior chamber eye wheel, the posterior enclavated iris claw lens, and the scleral fixation eye wheels. The iris claw lens can be placed either anteriorly, but posteriorly is preferred because it is more anatomically in position. Uh, there is uh, less risk of endothelial cell damage, anterior chamber is deep, uh, and the idocornial angle is wider. So I'll be starting with the topic, which is uh, the topic of my today, surgical steps of iris claw lens implantation. Um, starting with the first step. So to get the exact marking of the two side ports that we need, we can use the storic marker to mark zero and 180 degree. And once the marking is done, we now make the side port. Uh, I would like to mention one thing about the side port, that the side port should be a single staff, single, and a short tunnel. So this short tunnel of the side port helps us to, uh, for better manipulation and better maneuvering of the side instruments while we are enclaving the iris claw. This was a four weeks old case, so there was a sclerose tunnel and uh, also adherent iris tissue superiorly, which was released with the help of iris repositor. And uh, uh, we can use the trimsilon to stain the prolapsed vitreous, which help us to better visualize the anterior, anteriorly prolapsed vitreous. And the anterior vitrectomy is then performed. 
uh, to remove all the tractions and to remove all the vitreous from the anterior chamber. Once the anterior chamber is free of all the vitreous and pupil is well round, the iris claw lens can be then placed inside uh, under the air bubble over the iris tissue. It is then dialed so that the two, uh, the two haptics are at the vicinity of the side port. The air bubble is replaced with viscoelastic and now the lens can be held from the center. It is gently side below the iris tissue and it is tugged with the help of a Sinsky hook or any blunt instrument. So uh, here uh, we can see a nice tug is seen where the uh, enclavation has been made. So this confirms that the enclavation is proper and uh, it will not come out. Uh, similarly, on the other side, the haptic is gently slided below the iris tissue and then uh, the lens can be lifted, uh, uh, lifted up a bit so that we can see this indentation on the side so that we know where the notch is and then with a single click, we can just place the iris claw uh, lens in place and uh, the pupil is well round and circular at the end of the case. This was another case of aphakia which was planned for secondary eye so here uh, we did the toric mark, uh, sorry, the marking with a toric marker, uh, but make sure we need not make such a prominent marking because the, like we do in a toric lens, because this prominent marking will cause some hindrance when we uh, go for enclavation with the, uh, through the side port. Following steps are the same, we do the vitrectomy, uh, we clear all the vitreous, and then we place this iris claw lens under the air bubble. The reason we uh, place it under the air bubble is it uh, prevents the air viscoelastic from tripling down in the posterior vitreous. Once the lens is placed and the pupil, pupillary area is covered with the lens, we can replace the air with viscoelastic. And now in, uh, I have done a little slow motion to show the one more small trick that we hold this lens from the center such that the edge of the forceps is yeah, this edge of the forceps uh, is in inclination with the notch of the haptic. So this gives an indirect clue when we are beneath the iris. It gives an indirect clue as to where the notch is and as to where we have to enclavate. So uh, with just a single tuck, we can uh, get a proper enclavation. Because if we uh, do a multiple tucks, we, uh, we may damage the iris tissue over there. So this simple technique helps us. Also lifting the lens a bit so that we can see that indentation for uh, enclavation. Yeah. So now I would like to show some few cases. This first case was a traumatic anteriorly dislocated nucleus. And uh, I observed that there was no capsular support beneath it. So I gently dialed the nucleus and uh, and then prolapsed it through the scleroconeal tunnel. Once the nucleus is out of the tunnel, we now uh, stain the vitreous with the triamcelon and then do the anterior vitrectomy as discussed earlier. So anterior vitrectomy is important in such cases. Uh, after doing the anterior vitrectomy, may you, may, uh, we may use the pilocarpine to constrict the pupil further and then the iris claw lens can be implanted uh, in a routine fashion by simply tucking the first haptic followed by the other haptic. Instead of Sinsky hook, we can use this iris repositor spatula as well. This iris repositor spatula uh, is helpful because it is a blunt instrument so it is less traumatic to the iris tissue. But it depends on surgeon to surgeon, what do they prefer, Sinsky hook or the iris spatula. The excess viscoelastic can be washed off. And yeah. So this was another case of inferiorly dislocated IOL lens. This was a PMMA lens. So luckily it was in the anterior vitreous only. So I took it out through the scleroconeal tunnel with the help of a Sinsky hook. And following that, Anterior vitrectomy is performed after staining with triamcelon. So while performing anterior vitrectomy, make sure that the cut, uh, mouth of the cutter is uh, faced upwards and uh, always away from the iris tissue. 
because this will prevent to cause any hydrogenic damage to the iris tissue. There was some peaking superiorly, so because of the vitreous strand, so which was released with the help of iris spatula and then cut with the cutter. So uh, our aim is to achieve a good round pupil before implanting the iris claw. Pilocarpine can be injected and followed by the iris claw lens implantation uh, in a routine fashion as we have already discussed. We can also pull the lens uh, a bit to see whether the inclusion has been done properly or not. So, uh, and this is a last case that I would like to show of Pekia with the deficient posterior capsular support. So, uh, initially I planned to do a three-piece IOL if I could get a good capsular support, but there was, uh, there were, it was not a case. Uh, so, I went ahead doing the anterior vitrectomy and I had iris claw lens to my rescue. So, after performing the anterior vitrectomy, we uh, went ahead with the iris claw lens. Here, I would like to emphasize that the scleroconal tunnel that we make for implanting the iris claw should not be uh, more than 5 to 5.5, which is the uh, diameter of the iris claw. So, a small tunnel will do for iris claw lens implantation. So, these are the small tips that we can use to implant the iris claw to prevent any complications that occur like ovalization of the pupil or decentration of the eye well or maybe late disenclavation. Uh, these some complication uh, will be taken up in detail by my senior. So I'll just uh, stop my talk here. Yeah. So if I have time, I'll just discuss, uh, some, enumerate some of the advantages and disadvantages of the iris claw. So it is a simple technique. There is no suture required. Uh, there is easy learning curve, less time required, no tilting of eye will, very safe for corneal endothelium, and produces less glare. And uh, because now we place, place it posteriorly, so the physiological uh, space is there behind the iris. The disadvantage is, is may, it may cause iris atrophy in some patients or late disenclavation if uh, it is not properly enclavated secondary glaucoma, lens decentration, and lens pigmentation. Surgical techniques I have already discussed, and uh, these are some of the complications, like the iris atrophy. Uh, we, uh, we do not uh, put it in if there is iris atrophy, large iridectomy, or in uveitis cases. So to conclude, iris claw is clinically safe and effective secondary or primary procedure in cases with deficient posterior capsule or inadequate capsular support with minimal complication rate. So this procedure can be used in wide range of indications. Thank you very much. So, <laughs> so I'll just request my sir, uh, from whom I've learned a lot, uh, Professor Kamaljeet Singh sir, to present his talk. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Vishwangi. compare the, the SFI wala and the of pupil the iris tal ratio. Uh, thank you so much, Professor S.P. Singh and Shivangi. I see Aprajita sitting there and Vinod, Raju Vaish, and such good audience. <coughs> it's difficult to find audience these days. So you must have seen these iris claw lenses uh, being implanted by Professor Dajit Singh, who was the pioneer in implanting anterior chamber iris claw lenses. He used to fixate it on the anterior surface of the iris and I have seen beautiful results. But when you don't work then you have to do the work back. So Professor, uh, uh, his son Kiranjit actually started doing this iris claw lens and in our department, uh, Professor S.P. Singh, Professor Aprajita, Vinod, uh, Shivangi and uh, all other senior residents are implanting this iris claw lens with such an ease that I did not learn. 
doing this iris claw lens because I first lens I implanted it went into the vitreous. So I always call Vinod to assist me and Shivangi and uh, Professor S.P. Singh, some of those cases where I failed to do. So after Vinod came to the department, I started doing lots of lens uh, dislocation into the vitreous because I became very confident. And I always say that you are a great savior, Vinod. So thank you so much. And uh, now a little bit about secondary IOLs I would like to discuss. Uh, there are uh, several techniques that can be adapted actually. And uh, what you have to see first, uh, you can either implant it on table when you have a complication or you can do a secondary IOL later. After the surgery has been done, you find a fake and as Shivangi has shown, if there is dislocation of IUL or dislocation of lens. So you can do a very good uh, uh, iris claw lens, which is retropupillary fixed. So that is very, very important to learn. It takes no time. And uh, the surgery remains very quiet post-operatively. So what you have to do is that in a secondary IOL, you must do a cornea uh, examination properly. A specular examination is a must. You must look at the corneal endothelial cells. And you must examine the NTA chamber to see whether there are any vitreous tags there in the NTA chamber or not, which you would require to do vitrectomy later. Then posterior capsular integrity has to be also seen. All cases don't need iris claw. You can implant uh, other lenses. So for that, you have to look at the uh, uh, posterior capsule, whether the uh, capsular excess margins are available to you or not, whether the capsule has torn. So all these things have to be looked, and then based on that, you have to implant the lens. So iris should be all around. If the supposing the there is deficiency in the iris, then you have to make it round by applying sutures there. So then you can implant a iris claw lens. Otherwise, if the def iris is deficient, many a time we don't uh, implant iris claw lenses. And always examine the retina, do a OCT for uh, seeing whether there is any CME or not. And IOP must be seen. Uh, because if the IOP is high, you will be having trouble in doing the surgery. <coughs> so the this is one technique which uh, 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 Shivangi has shown several of these. Kya uh, hua yaar chal nahi ra brother. It's not working. Aage aage. So uh, this is a case uh, of scleral fixation. I have tried scleral fixation, iris claw all. But this surgery is done by uh, at Chitrakoot by Pranav, wherein you make a scleral uh, fixation. You make two flaps on the two sides. This is a victimized eye. And once you make the pocket, first you have to mark them so that they remain horizontally placed properly. Then you make a frown incision, like you make in SICS. And uh, then you ent enter through the scleral wound and the lens is put there and the haptics are out on one side. The same procedure is done on the other side. You can see there is a um, entry at the pars plana also there so that the fluid is going there. So it has been victimized and then the surgery is being done. And then you simply apply the sutures and then uh, you can do a sutureless uh, surgery also there after making pockets you can see and 30 gauge needle is used in this case then railroad technique is adapted and the haptic is taken out from the wound that you have made and uh, then you put it into the groove that you have made or you can simply do a cauterization there and leave it there in the scleral flap so that can also be done many surgeons do that also so if the IUL drop is there even in that this surgery can be done 
so it's the same the uh, many a times uh, they say that uh, uh, if you are doing a secondary IUL either you can implant a single piece or three piece foldable IUL in the back if you can see the capsular excess margin you can uh, place a three piece implantation in the sulcus also if the capsular excess margin is not very clear to you the uh, then you can uh, do a iris fixated IUL anterior or posterior both and a scleral fixation as has been discussed and uh, in the ciliary sulcus we must Im implant a three piece IUL so that is should be done and as I have said already that the vitreous must be removed from the anterior chamber uh, do a proper vitrectomy if you have not done a proper vitrectomy whatever type of IUL you will implant you will fail because you will have CME you will have glaucoma or corneal decompensation also later. So a good vitrectomy is a must. You can go from the pars plana or if you are not tuned to that, then you can go from the anterior chamber and do a good uh, uh, anterior vitrectomy. Iris should be available to you for iris flaw, otherwise you can do a scleral fixation. So some of the these points have been discussed by Shivangi already. So operation time is much shorter in retropapillary technique. So, which is longer in scleral fixation, it's um, these days uh, cataract surgeons don't have that much of patience and so it's a good to do a uh, iris claw lens. And easier surgery is there, scleral fixation takes long so it becomes slightly difficult. And final uh, visual outcome, there are no difference. And uh, then you have this uh, binocular, uh, this BCVA, which is good in bo both the cases unless you have a cystoid macular edema. Then IUL dislocation chances can be there in both the uh, cases. If the uh, CME may there is no difference and retinal detachment chances are there which you should be care of and uh, you must keep on examining the fundus. And as ha al has already been mentioned there are chances of iris atrophy. If you implant a iris claw lens there could be a pigment dispersion also because you are going behind the iris and putting this uh, iris claw into the uh, pigmentary epithelium there so there are chances of pigmentary dispersion which is more so common in diabetic patients where you will have lots of pigmentary dispersion and maybe even fibrinous uveitis pupillary distortion can be there and endothelial cell loss chances are there in uh, scleral fixation there could be a suture erosion which we have applied and the lens might tilt later on so that is possible and uh, rest of the things are similar so you can always implant an iris claw lens. You have seen the masters doing this surgery and that is always. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Kamalji, so for such an excellent talk. As you already covered both uh, that the scleral fixator lens as well as the iris claw lens and uh, summarized very nicely. And I would like to mention one thing that uh, uh, this uh, scleral fixator uh, lens most of the time uh, the surgeon I've been preferred are doing first of the report uh, by uh, a secondary IVL. And wh whereas the retropyrrhi iris cast lens is so easy and very time, uh, short time, and, uh, it has short learning curve. So it, ca it is a pr uh, the procedure of choice as a primary uh, uh, IVL. Uh, because you know most of the complicated situation, we don't have much time. You have to uh, uh, solve the problem uh, immediately. So this retroperiodic eyes cast is a different is better, <coughs> but uh, for sure you can you can think uh, whether you are comfortable you can do both the things uh, where the position capsule support is not there. Thank you so much. Now the next speaker, uh, Dr. Binod Kumar Singh, is going to uh, speak on nucleus drop management with ICL implantation. Uh, 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 you know, as a general ophthalmic surgeons, you can also do during if once you are doing the cataract surgery. Though if the surgeon is not uh, available at you know, you know, uh, set up, then you can at least learn some, something. Uh, at least uh, I will drop is there. And so Dr. Binod Singh is going to tell some of the, this uh, silent features uh, that uh, and any surgeon can perform. They may do the uh, vitrectomy and remove the nucleus or the I will and then how to implant the, in the same setting, how to implant the retroprive iris callus uh, at the same setting in the primary procedure. Yes, Dr. Binod, please. Yeah, thank you, sir, and good morning to all of you. Uh, 
here we will show you some videos and we will discuss something uh, how to manage in the same setting the nucleus drop or cortical metal drop with the Irish claw lenses. So the incidence rate of a nucleus drop or any cortical matter is about 0.3 to 1 percent of the cases. Uh, how uh, experience, how much experience you are, uh, sometimes it does not matter. Even uh, they, these are the few risk factor in such cases. Uh, even you have done thousand of surgeries or lakhs of surgeries, sometimes you face uh, these challenges. Uh, how to handle these cases and prevent the nucleus drop? Like uh, prior vitrectomy dies because you know, during uh, past when I vitrectomy, sometimes lens touch is there. And uh, after cataract, you don't know the whether the posterior capsule is uh, intact or there is uh, some tear during vitrectomy. So you have to be very careful. You should know about your cases uh, very well before uh, starting the surgery. And uh, general compromise, pseudo exfoliation, floppy iris syndrome, hypermature, posterior polar cataract, and complicated cataract. These are the few conditions you must uh, examine properly and then proceed with. Uh, great caution and uh, attention because the uh, next complication uh, which we will see after this nucleus drop or cortical matter drop or iris coming in the anterior chamber those are the serious complications like there is a corneal edema high intraocular pressure vitreous hemorrhage cystoid macular edema and retinal detachment so these are the very serious complication and sometimes you are not able to handle those uh, edema and detachment and vitreous hemorrhage and you and your patients are in anxiety till your patient does not good, uh, have good vision outcome. So please take precaution before proceeding such cases to avoid such complications. So um, first thing, uh, as early as you uh, uh, have uh, your experience, uh, with experience you can uh, see whether PCR is not uh, there or not. As soon as you have the signs, a few signs, uh, you can manage is easily and early. So further complication will be avoided. Like uh, you have a sudden pupillary constriction while during hydro dissection. This is called a pupil snap sign. Maybe a sudden cha deepening of the anterior chamber. You feel difficulty in rotating your nucleus due to the rupture sometimes vitreous comes in the back so you're not able to rotate it properly you may feel tilting of the nucleus so these are the few early signs if you recognize it you can uh, manage it uh, very nicely and very easily without creating further complications so if it happens now how, how to proceed after the nucleus drop after pcr you can uh, after pcr you can uh, still uh, hold your nucleus and prevent it going back to the vitreous. Like put your tip of the phacoemulsification emulsification uh, away from the capsule by another instrument behind uh, your tip or behind the nucleus. And after being extracted from the posterior chamber, the nucleus needs to be emulsified in the iris plane. Try to take it out anteriorly or uh, with little suction, hold the nucleus anteriorly and take it in the anterior chamber. If it is soft, you can manage it they are in the iris plane. If it is hard, yes. better to convert it into the SICS take it, take it, and take it out through the anterior route. That is a more easy and more less complicating. So a uh, few points are uh, they necessary you should know and follow. You so you can do a very good anterior vitrectomy even you don't do the past plane also. Like you have to create a closed chamber first of all. Reduce your bottle height. By reducing bottle height, you reduce the irrigation, uh, the flow of the irrigation. When the flow is less, though your vitreous does not get more dehydrated. If flow is more and your cannula is towards the posterior pole, so more vitreous will get hydrated and more vitreous will come anteriorly while doing anterior vitrectomy. First thing is the reduce the flow rate. And uh, second point is use the uh, maximum uh, cutting rate you have in your machine, 8,000, 10,000 with the minimal or moderate level of the vacuum. Vacuum should be low and cut rate should be the highest. It will not create the pulling of the vitreous and will cause a less stress on the retina. So these two points should be kept in the mind while doing anterior vitrectomy. So 
so uh, while managing your nucleus drop with the iris claw lens as already has been mentioned by the prior speaker that is very safe very speedier very convenient easy anyone can do any even the residents are doing uh, very well if you have some few tips and uh, guidance you can uh, start with the iris claw lenses without any uh, before any special training not required very less learning curves one or two things are there that uh, your interior chamber must be clear of the vitreous no vitreous tag should be in the pupillary plane no any uh, distortion of the pupil should be there make sure that with your ac is free of the vitreous and you have a sufficient iris support so this uh, retro pupillary iris lenses are so uh, uh, good now have a better design that this does not uh, create a much complication like even the increase of iop and your the cystoid edema and uh, a loss of the iris tissue so it's very easy and it, it gives you very good result and when you are putting it through the scleral tunnel that is more uh, best way to go through the scleral tunnel instead of increasing your the corneal incision So atrophic iris that uh, already told me it should be avoided. Here are the few cases we will see. There was a nucleus drop and as a conventional uh, pass planar 3 port 23 gauge uh, vitectomy is being performed here. Whole nucleus inside the vitreous lying on the retina. So a good vitrectomy should be done before uh, taking out your nucleus. It should be free of the vitreous. No pulling of the vitreous should be there. With the help of uh, your light pipe and suction, you can take it uh, anteriorly and put it in the anterior chamber and can support it with your uh, light probe so it does not go back. And very easily you can take it out from the SICS incision. And then again you look for the vitreous cavity is there any complication and you can see the very good round pupil is there as already technique has been tell you must keep in mind that your tunnel in a side port tunnel should be at the limbus it should not go more in the cornea so you will be able to uh, fixate it in the periphery of the iris that is one point and the two ports should be 180 degree apart if they are sideways you will feel difficulty uh, with the inclination you will have a difficulty in your angulation of the hand the second case is the aisle drop foldable aisle drop is there in the vitreous induce the pvd and do a good vitectomy your vitectomy should be up to the periphery, uh, maximum vitreous you can remove. No uh, uh, indentation is required to do vitreous base saving. Just your while picking up the lens, uh, no vitreous tag should come in the way. And very easily you can hold with the oil holding forceps, 23 gauge micro forceps. Put it in the anterior chamber. And again, look for the any break or tear before closing your case. And you can see 180 degree apart. And very gently, you can slide your eye in the AC and make it horizontal before uh, holding with the forcep. Do not hold uh, with the forcep and then make a horizontal. That is difficult. First make it lie horizontally and then you can hold with this uh, uh, forcep which have a broad base. With the broad base you, your lens does not rotate. It gives a good grasping. And very easily you can enclavate. You will uh, feel jerk in your hand when it is enclavated.
And if you don't see on the slit lamp, uh, no one can uh, tell that it is a posterior chamber arrival or it is iris clalensis. Here is a case of a fakia. Some uh, cortical matter is left in the AC and behind the iris. There was no matter in the vitreous uh, on the retina, so I did not do past lena vitrectomy. Simply anterior vit vitrectomy, uh, we can clear this cortical matter. And with this uh, iris repositor, you make sure that your iris is free from the uh, any vitreous tag. You can see a round circular pupil. Even if you don't have a tramsalon at that time, you can make sure that there is no tag with this iris uh, repositor. You can swipe all around the iris, before below the iris and above the iris in the pupillary margin. So we have a good round pupil. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Binod Kumar Singh. As uh, we have uh, remarked very nicely, uh, this is a message for you that you know patient has uh, so much high expectation from you, and once the patient has uh, uh, planned for the uh, surgery, and this kind of uh, situation may arise, it happens. It may happen with any time. It is well reported fact, and uh, certain uh, this way factors are also there. In that situation, if you, you face this kind of picture, then you can't postpone. You, and then patient not going to listen anything except he want to know, uh, listen that this, uh, this uh, surgery is excellent and then the next morning and the evening patient will get the vision. So you need to have this in such of cases that the same sitting, in spite of so much complication, patient definitely will get the vision, the same sitting, so as a primary uh, procedure, uh, this retro people is definitely better, uh, better option, one of the best option. Thank you so much. Uh, one more point I would look just uh, like to add. While inclimating the second uh, side of the IOL, while you are holding your uh, IOL with the forcep, uh, you uh, should uh, pull little bit of the lens anteriorly towards your port because uh, while you are holding the lens, uh, your superior iris is dipped downward. So you are not sure uh, that we, uh, it is covering whole pupil or not. So you can put little uh, uh, pull uh, towards yourself, then enclavate it. Then the whole pupil will be uh, covered with the IOL. Thank you. Dr. Vinod, tell me, you are doing so fast video, or how fast it will be? Sir, it will be so fast. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, no, no, so what power we have calculated for the like normal PCI lenses we reduced by uh, one adapter or 1.5 adapter. The next speaker is. Uh, the next speaker is our uh, Professor S.P. Singh. Uh, he is principal at the MLN Medical College, dean and director there at RRO, and he is a wonderful surgeon, does maximum number of surgeries even at this young age. So he is uh, very good at it and does lots of small pupil surgeries, lots of mm, iris claw lenses, secondary IULs, primary IULs, and he has got a very good series of subluxated IULs also. So he has lots of videos available to him. And uh, we have uh, his uh, speech now, Professor S.P. Singh, please. And sir also has a record of doing a maximum number of surgery in a single day uh, in SICS and FACO also. And he's a Linka book record holder also. And, uh, thank you so much. As, uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, welcome to this important session of Retropropyl Iris Lens. As uh, you know, we are also running the PG courses, training program. So in the government institution, though, slightly difference that uh, in the private setup or good setup, you are, you are the e expert surgeon. You are doing, you are managing the things and very less chances of complication is there. But uh, in the learning phase, 
uh, in the PG course we are running. So there is, a, as well as our center is also recognized by government of India as a training center uh, for different uh, specialties. So during learning phase, this uh, complication may happen. So uh, that is uh, the important to know the manner, how to manage the same city is very, very important. And uh, this retro paper, I would like to say, that is a wide range of uh, cases. In any case, I, that is that I have selected some of the complicated cases, uh, and you can watch in difficult cases also how you can uh, do uh, this simple procedure, how you can uh, do the secondary IVL, either primary seat or secondary difficult cases. So it has wide range of the cases. That's why I'm going to directly uh, start my video presentation in some difficult cases. Uh, this you know, this is the uh, total carnal opacity with a fecia as well as uh, this mediatic pill. You can see after removing uh, this opaque lens, you can see how the pupil is dilated and th there is a lot of sinicia, peripheral sinicia. Just pull it first with to assess whether uh, the pupil can be brought back to its position or not. So, in this case, I have uh, decided to do. Uh, the bring uh, smaller pupil with the help of the surplus technique of pupiloplasty in which the 10 zero prone incision you can take and uh, you can pass all around uh, at least eight uh, places uh, this, uh, with the help of needle uh, pass the, the suture all around it and you can see this is open sky so don't have much time to keep leave it uh, this open sky condition for a long time only you have to uh, finish the surgery as quick as possible. So you can see after passing surplus technique of pupiloplasty, you can see after passing just a tight it, and then you can bring, uh, at least you can able, you will be able to uh, to constrict the pupil uh, and don't tight at this point only thing. And then you, you can, you can see even this condition, in situation, how you can do, and this open sky, this is only option. It is very difficult to perform the sky fix in this case lens, type of lenses. Even in this situation, you can see the retro iris lens, how uh, nicely within, a, uh, it takes only a few minutes, they have one minute, within one minute, you will complete the procedure. Again, you have to go from the side port rather than uh, open sky, from the uh, paracentis, you can see, even this condition, uh, this kind of pupil or iris, uh, you can uh, you can implant the retro eyes garden and then uh, constrict and then you can finally tight it by the knot. But as you know, this pupil is a non active pupil, fixed pupil, so the size of should be at least 3.5 to 4 mm is sufficient uh, to prevent any kind of glare and now com uh, ultimately complete it. Ne this another case of carnopacy and uh, with uh, 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 aphecia. As well as you know, the, uh, the caps, uh, there is deficient iris. You can see how much deficient iris is there. Is, uh, you can watch it. So there's, uh, you can just pull it slightly. If there is any sinicia is there, there is you know how much tissue deficient. Even this condition, uh, you can impl uh, implant the, this uh, retro pupil iris class and is such a large defect because you know fixation is you know iris fixation. This unique fixation mid periphery where the pupil is not mobile and uh, and it is a vascular place so even and the lens is very stable i have followed this case and nothing going to happen and the first enclave if you enclavate it properly in the future i have not seen any case in which this dislocation or dislocation of lens has been taken place only if you learn the real technique you can see even this kind of condition in this situation as i think the only option no you can't put the eye in the entire chamber you, if you can't do the escape fixated and in this case open sky uh, for quite like time because open sky have a lot of complication uh, and hand may take space where may take space or uh, edema uh, macular edema will develop so you can see as a bullet you can see how stable i'm just showing the uh, you can see how much is stable even if this kind of condition is there you know another you know this is the uh, again, very complicated case. This is a posterior, uh, posterior uh, this is a phyloma, a partial phyloma. This is again, but, but, but always hope for the best. You can see uh, how to manage this case and provide a, a, a good vision to this guy. Otherwise, the person is, is, is thinking, then nothing can be done. This is the astrophyloma case of entire astrophyloma. Though it is partially in very placed, you can watch. You, you can see uh, it is clearly visible. That is a case of entire astrophyloma. 
and then do again slightly a place that in, uh, define slightly inferiorly you can see uh, thus just remove the lens try to just remove you know sir in this situation this is expected this expected nothing uh, nothing new here but you know do the entire bacteria properly and then again see ask the assistant to hold the iris so the iris is a little bit tart and you can see even this condition uh, uh, also, the, this is the only option. So, this is the beauty of the retrofusor ISIC senses. That is a wide range of cases in which you can perform any case in the, uh, now you can do. You can, the, the pupiloplasty can be done to avoid any case of the, uh, the gla post after the glare, etc. You can see just uh, in which direction you can do. Every case requires different kind of uh, suturing, different kind of pupiloplasty. Uh, first, uh, just approximate that and you can do. Uh, you can make the people in such a defect. The defect was because I know a case, this was a case of uh, estophyloma in which uh, this iris in, in atrophy and incarcerated uh, to the, uh, the tissue, fibrous tissue. You can then from there you can see hold it from the root of the iris and then again you can see how you can perform the pupil plasty in, 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 uh, in this case. Uh, so I know, you know the lens is very stable. It's nothing going to happen in the, in the future also. Uh, only it is reported uh, atrophy, hardly may, atrophy is not going to uh, disturb the lens, lens is not going to uh, dislocate. I have not seen till uh, uh, in my own cases in which I have enclavated properly. And you can see how the pupil can be, uh, this uh, the round pupil uh, can be made, made and ultimately you can complete it. Uh, then another uh, difficult case, you know, uh, this is, uh, you know, this is this a case of the posterior dislocated lens was moving and the pupil much more dilated. In this case, in, in even this dilated condition, how to do the, uh, this implant, the retropupil iris car lens. You can see that the lens is posterior moving and then I think it is going posteriorly, so I just uh, place this infusion, so the lens comes forward. So this does not require in this case to go the post, uh, posteriorly, it comes out uh, automatically after an infusion. So lens has been removed. And you can see again, put it with serrated microfarsis, try to pull it, and this bring whether it will be bring back or not. So you can see even in this much dilated, because the inclination takes place in the mid periphery. So you can see here you can pull it. You can see in this kind of, in the the only trick that has been earlier speaker given that uh, it's the limb incision should be given to the post limbal and it's short uh, length. So you, ca you can include the pet mid periphery rather than uh, rather than enclave in the Towards the, peri uh, towards the periphery of the iris. And then with the, the another technique, this, this is uh, single pass for um, uh, uh, fourth row pupiloplasty, you can with the side port, the Ayuna and Dr. Amar Agrawal, there are various methods. This fourth row pupiloplasty advocated by Dr. Uh, this. And then you can see, the so earlier the, the ships are not technique also. There are so many technique, but you know, uh, in this situation, in so much dilated pupil is there. So at least the, my aim is not only to tell only iris class. You have to manage in total. How does this type of different cases uh, it comes? You came across to these type of cases. You have to manage everything. Not only to put the lens, escape fixation, iris class, anything. But you have to know how to uh, this uh, comprehensively manage the, manage the situation, manage the case. So, you know, this is uh, an, uh, another aphigia with uh, this uh, old case and with uh, uh, this uh, people dilated, much more dilated. In this case, you know, I am going to demonstrate another technique, earlier in surplus technique. Earlier I demonstrated in surplus uh, technique, sur surplus technique uh, in the open sky. Now I am going to demonstrate this uh, another, though it is difficult, but uh, you can uh, do the surplus technique in which with the side port, you can straightly make it slightly curved, so you can pass through the one port all around, one to two uh, meter away from the pupil margin and uh, at a distance, 0.5 mm at the border. And then from this one side port, you can uh, remove the, this lens or this uh, needle, retrieve it. Uh, you can pass through the cannula or the needle as a guide, and you can bring back the, this needle you can make uh, two or three, three or four places, different places. Uh, if you take uh, multiple uh, entries, then uh, it requires very uh, 
only uh, at a time you can uh, pass the suture at two or three places, then retrieve it, again go for another port, but in the same I have done in only th three port, making three ports from the opposite side, pass uh, all around the, this pipli margin, and then the needle is retrieved. You can see both the, this, at one port, uh, both the end has been just removed, and you can see, again, in this, this much dilated pupil, you can see, again, implant the push iris car lens with the same principle, and then you can you can tighten it. You can see how you can bring back the people in a such a difficult case. But uh, once you know, if you do some cases, then you can you can uh, do other cases also. This is one other. You can see this is the case. This and a very difficult case. Earlier, when I this way, the person referred to me, I thought that this is the only remnant part of the iris is there. What to do? Earlier, I decided to do in this case is square fixated lens. And then I started uh, doing the surgery. Then uh, I changed my idea. You can watch what to do in this case. This is again very difficult gone case. You can watch it once after making the uh, tunnel. And I injected the fluid. You have to just, I just make it. Then, you know, after injecting it, then I, then pupil is moving and un uh, unfolding. Then uh, ultimately the diagnosis changed. That is nothing but the severe, ar case of severe ardodialysis. You can see then how you can, the, and the suture, the ardodialysis case in this case. Earlier, that's only a small remnant was visible. But when I started injecting the fruit inside, the, um, the, the iris start unfolding. And then I, I thought this is nothing, um, uh, but that this curl, whole the iris is curled at one particular point. And you can see in such a case, uh, how, what to do, how to manage this case. In this case, you know, different places, make a scrub tunnel at different places rather than making a flap. And that uh, in that tunnel, uh, you can just pass the different places. Again, with the hip, you can do the matrices also, or, or the separate, uh, this uh, double arm needle, you can take it uh, from the, this uh, root of the iris when capacity, from the another end, if as a needle, 26 gear, 27 gear needle, it helps to retrieve the needle, and you can go <coughs> difference multiple places and you can see uh, the even this case the people can be can be made you can earlier you know this is the real challenging case but you have to accept uh, uh, the challenge of the patient challenge of the, uh, of, the ca of the cases of the eye whatsoever you can see the people can be made I and mean, again i am going to again demonstrate further in this case uh, what to do further which kind of lens uh, have to put in this case, you, you know, in this case you can't put the uh, in the ACI one, only you can, you can think even this case, uh, retropivide lens place can be placed with it. This last case, another case you know, uh, this is the case of, uh, this is a rare, uh, uh, rare, rare case iodosysis, in which you know, uh, rare case iodosysis, very few cases have been reported, and in which again the genus are a baby, to total lens is uh, 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 almost dislocated, though it is, uh, is placed in the anterior bitter's face. This is like ardocytes case of ardocytes. In which the, this, uh, uh, it is moving the anterior surface of the, as a stand is moving, you can just uh, uh, bring uh, the nucleus in the anterior chamber and just remove it. And uh, you can see this is the, the uh, this is the rare case of the case of the, uh, this, uh, Iodosysis case, the whole stand is moving the interior. What to do in this case? Again, I plan and I follow this case again in even this situation. Though you have been reported iris traffic, etc., etc., but you can implant anything. Tissue at the tissue is there, pigment, there's loss of pigment, but the tissue is there, remain. So, even this rare case, you can do the uh, retropipal iris calluses. So, uh, that's our main aim of this course is, uh, is just to cover everything. And this is the beauty of this kind of lens stability, it is very secure. Uh, um, um, this kind of iris lens, lens very safe and uh, efficient. Uh, and the lens is stable, having very less uh, complication of this kind of lens. If you know real technique, there is no mobilization, there is no disintegration of the lens, then no drop of lens, and the, uh, and the macular edema are so less in comparison to the SF fiber. As you know, that is, that is a very lengthy surgery, and it takes very short time. So, of course, uh, and you know, 
the chronic inflammation of this is be less because as the lens is enclavated in the mid periphery, whereas the what happens the ischemic fixes the lens, you have to uh, go through the ciliary body. Then there is a lot of chronic inflammation may persist. That may lead to the macular edema. It is more than the detrimental iris paralysis. So this is a thank you very much for patient session. Some very rare cases where uh, many of us would not like to dream there doing this kind of uh, surgery. It's very, very difficult and made so easy by Professor S.K. Singh. So it's a wonderful uh, technique. And now everybody would be sure that iris claw can be implanted in any situation. And uh, when you go back, you start doing this surgery. Thank you so much, Professor S.K. Singh. Now we have uh, another very good uh, surgeon, Professor Aprajita Chaudhary. She has been my student uh, at MDI Hospital and now she's heading the department. I feel so proud that she's heading and she'll be doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Very good afternoon. Thank you, AIUS, for giving me this opportunity. I will be speaking on merits and demerits of iris claw lenses. There is a no conflict of interest. According to the National Program for Control of Blindness and Visual Impairment, the prevalen uh, prevalence of surgical complication is 1.2%. Out of 1.2%, the aphakia is one of them. These are the available options where the sight meet innovation, aphakic lenses redefines the vision. In the when the lens is absent, that will lead to the visual disturbances in the form of blurred vision, glare sensitivity, and difficulties with the depth perception. These visual disturbances lead to <coughs> this. These visual disturbances affect the quality of the life of the patient. In the for th that will lead to the visual incapabilities, which will lead to development of this frustration, anxiety, and dissatisfaction. The limited corrective measures are available, such as glasses, contact lenses, and intraocular lenses, Connected. to restore the vision. Glasses and contact lenses has their own limitations in the form of magnification of the images the limitation of the visual field, optical abrasions, chromatic abrasions, and false projections and all. To overcome these side effects of the glasses and contact lenses, these are the available options for the aphakic IULs. Either the angle-supported IULs, iris-supported IULs, and posterior chamber scleral fixated IULs. Out of, among all these lenses, the only the scleral fixated IUL available in the foldable form. Rest all are available only in the rigid lenses. This is an ab algorithmic approach for the selection of correct IOL. In the absence of posterior capsule, in the absence of adequate back support, and if there's a no iris support is there, the choice is a I iris claw lenses. But if the, if the iris tissue is not available, if the little amount of iris tissue even is not available, then choice is a scleral fixated lenses. I will be uh, telling about the merits and demerits of the iris claw lenses. This is a comparison table of the all the aphakic IOLs. We can see the potential complications are less with the iris, com uh, iris claw lenses as compared to the AC IOL and the scleral fixated lenses. And the suitability for the complexes cases during the primary surgery, it is the iris claw lenses are more suitable as compared to AC IUL and uh, SF IULs. So grip the future of vision with the iris claw lenses. Clarity is at your fingertip. This, is a, uh, this shows the evolution of this iris claw lenses from iris fixated collar stud lenses to the artisan lenses. We can see as, the, as in our previous, uh, previous uh, presentation, uh, Sir told about that the iris claw lens is fixated at the mid peripheral part of the iris of the stroma, which is less vascular and less reactive. You can see the all the uh, all the pupillary muscles, the inspector pupil and the dilator pupillary muscles are not come in that area. So, uh, so the fixation of the iris claw lenses are not affecting the iris physiology and pupil shape is also not altered. The advantage of these lenses are, these are the small size lenses. The overall length is 8.5 millimeter with the optic of 5.4 millimeter. The lenses are independent to the size, independent to the size of the eye. 
because it is independent of the cornea white to white measurement and the eyeball size it can be implanted in any eye even in a small eye the only drawback is it is a rigid uh, rigid palm lenses until now the no foldable options are available as we, as we know the surgically induced astigmatism is depend upon the size of the incision since these are the rigid lenses so minimum incision of 5.4 mm is necessary this can be further reduced by making the scleral pocket incision second thing is that shifting of the position of icl from anti pupillary to the retro pupillary position this is a biome picture which is showing that the blue line shows the position of this uh, acil and the yellow line shows the position of pre pupillary or anti pupillary uh, icl and this uh, green line suggests the position of this uh, 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 retro pupillary icl and sfil we can see when the position is shifting from anterior to posterior that is more more near to the physiological position so the visual outcome is better with the rp icl as compared to ap icl and ac icl optimizing the design from biconvex to the concave or convex further result in a reduced complication as the concave anterior surface of the lens is far away from the iris so the complication lies iris chafing inflammation and pupillary block is minimal with this rp icls this is a biome picture which is showing the anti pupillary and the retro pupillary location of the eye iol we can see in a, in a picture a there is a this uh, cornea is uh, 2.21 mm away from the lens while in a R in the condition of rp icl the cornea is 3.33 mm away from the lens the lack of proximity with the corneal endothelium with iris fixated lenses means the retro fixator icl have less corneal compli uh, complications like corneal edema endothelial cell loss endothelial decomposition as all while these are all complications are more common with the S ac icl because it is large in size and it is more in contact with the corneal epithelium endothelium it can be used as a primary procedure because it is very easy very easy to place sir showed in the uh, in the previous slides uh, in the previous videos it is very easy to place it take very less time so it is uh, it is can be used as a primary procedure the short learning curve is very short in spite of in the scleral fixated lenses the technique is difficult and the time is is take it 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 required the suturing so the longer surgical time is required I see uh, ICL is a in the combined procedure if we want to do the penetrating keratoplasty especially in the case of aphakic bullous keratopathy in the patient where the deficient posterior capsule is there the choice is the uh, ICL in the advantage of this ICL is the oh, hypotonic open sky face is reduced by implanting the ICL thus reducing the chance of hypotonic maculopathy macular edema and corneal detachment this is the same video which sir showed actually <coughs> not there double click the video nahi chahiye nahi chal raha नहीं है नहीं चल रहा उसमें है चलिए कोई नहीं ओके सर ऑलरेडी शोर दैट दैट वीडियो कंटेन दिस दिस इम्प्लांटेशन ऑफ द आई सी एल इन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ कॉर्नियल ओपैसिटी द इंट्रोकुलर प्रेशर राइज इज लेस विद द आई सी एल बिकॉज द बिकॉज इट इज बिकॉज ऑफ द शेप ऑफ द आई सी एल इट इज अ कॉन के वो कॉन्वेक्स इन शेप सो टेम्प्रेरी राइज ऑफ आई ओ पी इज रिकॉर्डेबल बिकॉज ऑफ पोस्ट ऑपरेटिव इन्फ्लेमेशन एंड रिटेन विस्टिक्लास्टिक्स विच इज रिस्पॉन्ड वेल ड्यूरिंग द शॉर्ट पोस्ट ऑपरेटिव पीरियड द एस एफ आई एल हैज ए हाई रिस्क ऑफ ग्लोकोमा ड्यू टू बिकॉज द एस एफ आई एल इज सपोज टू प्लेस इन द सीलरी सल्कस एंड वेन द सूचर आर पास इज फ्रॉम द सीलरी बॉडी रीजन दीज सूचर्स आर रिटेन इन दैट सीलरी और द हैप्टिक ऑफ दिस आई स्क्रियल फिक्सेटेड लेंस रिमेन इन द सीलरी बॉडी रीजन दैट विल कॉज इज अ क्रॉनिक इन्फ्लेमेशन ऑफ द सीलरी बॉडी एंड इन करेक्ट सूचर प्लेसमेंट एंड पेरिपल एंटेसाइनिकिया आर द कॉज ऑफ रेज इंट्राक्रोकुलर प्रेशर इन द एस एफ आई एल एज कम्पेयर टू दिस ए सी आई यू एल एंड द एस एफ आई यू एल द आई सी एल में इन द आई सी एल द चांसेज ऑफ आई ओ पी राइज इज वेरी लेस इन द एंटीर चैम्बर आई सी एल 
IOL, the excessive size of the AC IOL give too much pressure to the root of iris, leading to the damage of anterior chamber angle and formation of peripheral anterior synechia. So the study suggests this, uh, suggests that the, the uh, chances of rise in IOP in 19% of the patient as compared to this uh, SF IOL, which is in a 4% of the patient. And none of the patient is recorded uh, with the ICL, with the, uh, with the concave or convex shape, is not recorded having a long standing rise in the IOP. The iris atrophy at the site of inclination is reported in the 24% of the retropupillary iris claw inclination. This is a cause of disinclination. Iris, as the iris inclination is done at the mid peripheral part of the iris, which has low uh, blood perfusion and less reaction. But in the long, long run cases, the chances of this disinclination is there. The tilting and disintegration is also noted. This disintegration and tilting of the RPICL is due to broken haptic, disinclination of the iris tissue due to iris atrophy, improper surgical technique, and the post-operative inflammation and IOP changes are, are the factors. The study suggests that the tilting and disintegration of posterior and anterior chamber ICL, in, in both of them, the median disintegration is more in the RPICL as compared to the A anti-pupillary ICL and the in the ICL. And uh, the same thing, the tilt is recorded more in the anti-pupillary ICL as compared to the RP ICL. So the til tilting, is, uh, tilting is mostly temporal, temporal and disintegration is mostly inferotemporal. The cystoid macular edema is a one of the complication which is generally not there with us, uh, which is minimal uh, among the all the available option for this uh, aphakic IL. The C uh, this uh, cystoid macular edema is uh, minimal with the ICLs. So ICL can be implanted in all the condition where the ACIR is contraindicated, like the congenital agrial abnormality, anterior segment trauma, uncontrolled glaucoma, or shallow anterior chamber. The limitation is this. This is a non-foldable rigid palma lenses and needs sufficient iris tissue for the implantation. So it can't be implanted in the aniridia, iris atrophy, and recurrent iridocyclitis. Take home messages, ICL implantation can be done in any eye with sufficient support of iris. Dilatation and contraction of the pupil is not affected. RPICL provide better stability and lower the risk of IL tilting. Minimum endothelial cell loss with ICIL and minimum chance of raised intraocular pressure. Thank you for patience listening. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Aprajita, for telling us all about iris claw and scleral fixated eye wheels. Now I invite uh, Dr. Jitendra, Assistant Professor at RIO, to give his talk on the, uh, ultimately I would say that you would be the person who would be concluding and telling us all the benefits of Iris, Iris Claw IOL. Uh, good morning everyone, I'll be discussing about the uh, complication associated with the Iris Claw lens and how can we uh, avoid, how can we manage accordingly for the better visual outcome. Uh, now, uh, for a retropupillary iris claw, we have to like we have to choose a better option in deficient capsule. So, in respect of safety profile with minimal complication. So, it is important to assess uh, complication associated with various option available for secondary or implantation. Now, one by one, well, the discussion about the complication. Now, first of all, the surg uh, surgically induced astigmatism is assured with the size of the incision. So, retropupillary iris claw, we have a SIA less because of less optic diameter, 5.5. As compared to SFIL, SFIL, we have a 6 mm optic diameter, but nowadays we have a foldable uh, three-piece IL, uh, which can be implanted through 2.8 mm incision. Another complication is the pupil ovalization, as we, we, we are desired, round pupil are desired, but sometimes for the beginners, we have uh, we encountered, uh, encountered a horizontal ovalization of pupil. To avoid this, like, uh, is a short video uh, that uh, describing uh, our that for a round pupil, uh, our stab incision should be a post-limbal incisions and should it be of uh, short intracorneal length. So that when we enclave iris claw, it should be away from the, in a mid-periphery mid iris, away from the pupillary border. When we go uh, close to the pupillary border, we have a cat eye reflex, and uh, which, uh, which, which result in uh, horizontal ovalization. Gently repositioning the iris in this case, and other end, and enclaving it, or a desired round pupil is achieved. Another complication we can we can uh, rarely uh, manifest is transient IOP elevation, which can be as a consequence of varieties, pigment dispersion, and most importantly, retained viscoelastic. 
So to avoid the uh, viscoelastic to uh, go behind the IOL, this is a short video describing that always implant the lens in, in presence of uh, air. First implant the uh, air, then implanting the IOL, gently rotating it and removing the IOL so we prevent the viscoelastic to go behind the lens. Uh, coronary endothelial cell loss are, uh, in retro PPA is very less as compared to SFIL. We have a longer surgical time, so around 20% endothelial cell loss occur as compared to ACOL, which have maximum number of uh, maximum endothelial cell loss uh, as compared to retro pupillary iris claw lens. Cystoid medical edema can be can be found in these cases, but uh, these are due to persistent vitre traction. So complete vitrectomy from the anterior chamber is must to uh, to avoid this uh, cystoid medical edema. Decal inflation is uh, experienced with the, um, uh, can be experienced uh, with the beginner surgeon uh, due to insufficient primary enclavation. And 24% uh, of the cases have iris atrophy with the iris, uh, retro pupillary iris claw implantation. This is a short video we are describing how to enclavate uh, that this uh, uh, iris claw end is one end is enclavated and gently from the other end of the iris claw, we gently reposit the iris and other end is slightly enclavated the iris and uh, but suddenly it's the beginners, we, we didn't, it, it confirmed when we uh, remove the viscoelastic, it suddenly moved behind the one end of the uh, uh, iris claw, get de-enclavated and gently we move the iris claw in the anterior chamber and re it. Decentration of lens also can be prevented. This is a tip of the forceps. This is a special forceps, iris claw forceps. That these tips of the forceps aligning with the notches in the haptic so that the we can get the centered uh, position of the iris claw lens. Another another thing we can do in this case, like uh, like before implanting the lens, we can have a primary marking, a zero and 180 degree, with that simple toric marker. Just marking with the uh, axis zero and 180 degree so that we can avoid this decentration of IOL. Now to conclude, this, uh, this implantation of retro pupillary lens are associated with minimal complication. So these complications can be avoided and managed effectively. It should be the procedure choice for secondary oil implantation. Thank you. Any question? What's your question? Uh, as you know, uh, people, uh, you can use, uh, depending upon the, uh, the inflammation of the surgery, routine cases, you can put, there is no problem, as uh, in not going to uh, um, disturb any um, uh, iris claw lens, so you can use the cycloplegic also, if it required, if inflammation is there, if the otherwise uh, uh, routine case, one, one, one time you can put the this, uh, mediatic also, no problem. Anything you can use. Anything you can use, no problem. You're not going to disturb anything you can use, no problem. As you know, it is required only in case of routine cases, if in the FECO, if, the, if there is no inflammation, uh, is quiet, usually it is not required. But if you think there is some kind of inflammation is there, if that is there uh, for making the, for preventing any, any sinica, anything, you can put to so similarly normal routine cases like other uh, cutter protocol, you can follow same pro protocol. Any question? Thank you very much for your uh, uh, kind of, uh, presence and patient hearing. And uh, as I think this uh, uh, instruction very much will be definitely very much helpful to everybody to manage to solve the problem, to manage at the same uh, same, uh, same setting. We hope uh, uh, the next country will see you. Thank you very much. Let's have a group photograph.